All right, welcome back, everybody. This is a big week this week for the Michigan Wolverines and the fans that are tuning in. It is rivalry week. It is Michigan, Michigan State. But before we get to that, we're joined by two special guests, two rising sophomores, Mason Graham and Kenneth Grant. Guys, what's the word? How you doing? Say good. We're doing really good, to be honest. Doing good as well. Just excited. <laughs> yeah. You guys wouldn't be you, – you, you wouldn't – there's no other answer, right? You wouldn't even tell me yeah. otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, listen, I think the na- the names are a little bit backwards down there, but I think these guys need no introduction. That being said, every week we are joined by some of our members of our Michigan football team, and if you want to support them, please support them. This is NIL. Make sure you head over to championcircleuofm.com. That is Champion Circle uofm.com this is our weekly podcast with the players called the lab that is the leaders and best this is a michigan podcast um fellas want to just kick it off with the the question that everyone's curious about it's rivalry week we are recording this on a monday is this monday any different than any other monday in the season oh uh, no nah, i mean it's definitely it's definitely just the same old monday but like Coach Mender was telling us today, like our preparation is championship season now, so we got to double down on everything. Yeah, kind of yeah. like KG was saying too. Um, you know, we're going to their place, um, and two years ago when we went to their place, we didn't want that. We didn't get the outcome that we wanted. So even though we weren't on the team, but you know, it still affected those other guys on our team. I was going to ask you that because did that get pulled up? Like it obviously got mentioned, right? As you guys were recruits at the time, I'm sure committed to Michigan at the time. So you were aware of it. Um, What's the conversation like for you guys? Because that was that was a game Michigan was favored. They were winning. They should have won. Right. And and, um, didn't end up winning. Uh, You know, how, how much is that a conversation in the meeting rooms this week? Yeah, I mean, I feel like we we always have a team meeting on Mondays um, and I feel like Coach Harbaugh. <clears throat> Coach Harbaugh really um, harped on just how fun it is to bring Paul back home. Um, even though, like, we go out on the bus, we go up on the bus there, and we come back on a bus. So, uh, you know, those bus rides will be even more fun on the way back. Yeah, like he said, coming out with the dub, the, he said the bus ride is gonna be fun. You know, like at the halfway point, we stop at like a little rest station and uh, give Paul to one bus to the other bus, and then we ride back home. I remember. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> yeah, we we did it my senior year back in 16. We won on the road. And and listen, that was it. That was a game for me. So I know this all too well. We were we were ranked. We were rolling. We, we were heavily favored against Michigan State. Um, but but as you guys know, man, it didn't matter. Like that, that team always turns it up a notch. They always play you guys hard. I know. You know, Coach Harbaugh gave them a lot of respect in their meet, uh, in his presser today. I've listened to you guys give them a lot of sp- respect throughout the season. Is that is that something you're aware of where, hey, even though this team, you guys are absolutely rolling, you are playing excellent football, but is there an understanding with this being rivalry week that anything can fly and that you guys are going to have to be prepared for anything? Uh, yeah, definitely. They definitely play us different. Uh, but, like, just looking on the tape of them the whole year, Last year, and then looking at the tape of how they played us, they definitely try to play harder, faster, and all that. Yeah, yeah, and especially like, you know, you know, every team's really trying to come after us. They're giving us their best punch because they know they're gonna have to bring their best punch to be able to beat us. So uh, we're getting everyone's best every week. You guys got good chemistry, good flow. These are some things a bit interesting always getting three on the couch. But we were talking pre-show. You guys are sophomores, right? And we already hinted at it. You weren't there for the last time uh, Michigan played Michigan State because this is only your second year in the program. So you were recruited together. Is that correct? Did you guys have any storyline, any, any stories to tell us? Uh, were you friends in recruiting? Uh yeah, we went on a we went on a visit together. Uh, I met him when we actually had the buzz cut. <laughs> Yeah, I used to when I was in high school. I used to have a buzz cut because we had to do, uh, we had to shave our heads before every year, uh, before every season. And like, I remember, I forgot. I think it was the Washington game. We came on oh, our, yeah. official visits together. Um, I was just like, "Who's this guy?" <laughs> like, we, were, we ended up being cool, but we were just like, we didn't really get to know each other that much on our visit. Yeah. 
But there's a bunch of you, right? Like, I, I don't want to leave anyone out, right? Colston's a sophomore. Shoot, Will Johnson's a sophomore. I, there's a there's a bunch of guys on this team. Shoot, Derek Moore, right? I mean, you guys had a really talented class. Um, I, I, I still have a group chat with my guys that I was recruited with at Michigan to this day. And that, that was back in, like, 2011, 2012. We still texting it every now and then. Um Outside of you too, how close is the sophomore class? Because there's a bunch of you guys that are producing right now. Yeah, I, I would say it's really close. Um, you know, we're always doing stuff with each other outside of football. Um, I feel like we're one of like the strongest uh, classes um, that we have on our team. So it's just cool being able to be that close with some of the guys uh, that you're going to be here with, with for most of the time. Yeah, our class is definitely a very likable class. I mean, I consider all them guys like brothers type because, like, mm -hmm. that's really how we how close we are to each other. Like, out, I think outside of football, we probably see each other, like, every day. So that's how, like, tight it is. Dude, that's the best part about, about college, man, is, like, it's you practice together, you play together, you go to class together, you live together, you hang yeah. out together. Like, it really is a brotherhood because you do so much together. I mean, from a brotherhood standpoint, I'm just thinking about uh, – I'm thinking about when you make a sack, either of you guys and everyone comes to celebrate. Uh, Kenneth, you had the big interception against Nebraska, right? Great, yeah. great soft hands, too. I mean, <laughs> what what's that like? So you have the brotherhood off the field, but then when you make the plays, you have the other 10 guys on the field running out to celebrate with you guys. Yeah, it's really fun just seeing all the guys happy for me and, and like, doing all the handshakes we make and stuff like that. Just it, Yeah, it's just fun. It's like it's unreal, to be honest. Is it ever hard to remember the handshakes? Uh, nah, not really. <laughs> Never like the handshake. Up. The handshake is the key. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Well, even Coach Harbaugh got in on that last week, right? Like Will had the pick six to to open the game against Minnesota and and threw on the buffs, and there was a team picture, and then Coach Harbaugh came over. Was that planned, or was that just the energy of the moment? He, he wanted to get in with you guys. Yeah, I don't think that was planned at all. <laughs> I think like Coach Klink was right there. I think you can see it like in a little video. Coach Link is like pulling Coach Harbaugh into the picture. And then Coach Harbaugh <laughs> just gets the memo that he needs to be in it for that one. So I think it just happened as, you know, went on. I feel like that one's going in the museum or so. Is that going up anywhere in the building? Did you guys put that up yet? Yeah, not that I know of, but I'm sure it probably will be in that little, uh, that little area in the museum sometime. Yeah. Man, soon enough, man. Uh, so on this show, we, we've had Chris Jenkins. Like, we, we've had a bunch of different guys uh, come through. And I just think about you dudes in the interior, man. And, and hey, man, obviously you got to have size. Like, you're banging. You're getting double teamed. It, it, that's true. But you guys are quick. You know how to get skinny in the hole. And, and, and the room is so deep. I mean, it's you two there, but then it, it's Ray Sean, Benny, it's Chris Jenkins. We could keep going down the list. What's that competition like, man? How 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 fun is that to play in a room with so much high quality talent? Yeah, it, it's definitely fun just knowing like you got guys that behind you that are gonna like step up and be the same caliber as you. Like it's never no fall off or anything like that. And I I would say it's really not like a competition is really just like a brotherhood, like, mm -hmm. like everybody eats type of type of defense and type of rotation. Yeah, we're like we're all happy for each other for each other when we make plays. Um, and I think it's like really important for us, like kind of like in the earlier stretch of the season, you know, we're all kind of getting the same amount of reps. So we're all staying fresh and we're all just going to roll together throughout the season. Um, like you kind of see at these other schools, some guys are taking 60, like every snap, every game. So it takes a toll yeah. on you. But it's always good to know that we're all kind of like the same caliber players and can all do the job. Yeah, man, that that, that freshness matters so much. Like, can you think back to where you were as freshman last year to now? I mean, is there is there a noticeable difference in terms of how fresh you are at this point in the season? Uh, yeah, definitely. I, I think my body, same as his, probably like feel way better from last year. Uh, just playing, keep getting fresh and keeping fresh. Yeah, I'd say the same thing. Uh, we probably, I don't know that like that we played as much as we did this year, um, as much. But like we definitely feel better, um, just getting used to the college game style and what it's like to be out there. So, were you guys uh, were either of you playing scout team at all in the season as well? Uh, 
No, <laughs> not much. Okay, I didn't know if uh, if you uh, if you I know you guys were starting and getting playing time. I didn't know if they had you doing double duties because I guess probably not, right? If you if you stayed that fresh, uh, but that was kind of going to lead me into the next question. Um, you know, had you been playing scout team, that that would have meant you're going up against this offensive line, and we had Keegan and Zinner on last week, and um, I do some film breakdowns for the Big Ten Network and just watching those guys play, just the physical brand of football, hip to hip, always on the same page. I mean, you have iron sharpens iron within your room, uh, you know, the, the guys that you guys share in the interior D line, but then you have iron on iron, your D line versus that O line. You know, how often are you guys matched up in season? And, you know, how fun is that to go up against those group, those dudes that are, you know, the back to back Joe Moore Award winners? Yeah, I feel like, um, you know, earlier in the week, too, um, we still do like Michigan versus Michigan stuff um, just to sharpen our brand because uh, we know we're going against the best of the best and we're going to get the best look from those guys as well. So I just feel like it's great for game preparation going against um, other opponents, too, because. Um, it just you get, you get prepared for the best. So when you play other teams, you're just ready to go. Yeah, you could definitely like tell the difference between like sometimes our our O line and the opponent's O line. It definitely like but going against the best. You could really like see, t- see the difference and feel the difference for sure. They're deep too. I mean, like there's there's dudes that are rotating in that aren't like listed in the starting five that that really probably are starters, right? So it's like it doesn't matter if it's ones or twos or whoever. Like there's dudes getting matched up. Uh, you guys got any good stories about you know as, as true freshmen you're learning? Mason, I know you got there early. Kenneth, were you an early enrollee as well? No, I got there in the summer. Okay, Mace, do you remember that first spring? I remember hearing about you. You were doing like. Really good stuff. They're like, hey, man, this dude's a true freshman. Watch out for him. Do you have a uh, a welcome to college moment in that first spring going up against those dudes on the O-line? I don't really have, like, a specific moment, but I feel like there's probably been a few times, and I'm sure you're aware. Uh, actually, I don't know. You probably are, but uh, we have this drill called Beat Ohio. It's kind of like an inside zone yeah. type of live, live drill. Um, and then, like, once I – like, a few weeks in the spring, Coach Olsen threw me in with the one sometimes to – to get a feel of how it's actually going to be like. So um, I've got moved like sometimes, but like there's no like one mo- specific moment where it's like, like a welcome to college football moment. I didn't pro- see it. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. There's no, been some yeah. bad plays though, for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Of course. Um, yeah, okay. So yes, I think we've all heard about the beat Ohio drill. We've all heard it, but I don't know that people really know what that means. If you guys could kind of go in depth, Hey, what is the beat Ohio? What's it like? Are you guys just in practice and, and Coach Harbaugh blows the whistle and beat Ohio, or, or how's that work? Yeah, it's basically uh, it's like in, some people call it like inside run and stuff like that. It's basically like inside run. It's a seven man box. Uh, we play with our seven man box, so like no safeties and no corners, just the D line and the linebackers, and then versus there the old line tight ends and the running backs. So it's just. Straight on, straight football run, rundowns. Yeah, so and then, and then usually like, just like so you like we usually know like around what type of practice, like what time during practice, like a little earlier. But you hear those like these sirens come on, like the you know the purge siren. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, those get thrown on, and you know it's ready to strap up the helmet. Right. So, so that's what I was going to ask you is like, listen, every team does inside, inside drill. Like for you guys that may not know that are watching this, that have practiced, like you have a script in practice, you know, Hey, one day you're going to go over your third down plays on offense and defense. One day it might be short yardage. One day it's play action. Um, But almost every day you have a drill dedicated to some type of run. And and especially on your work days, you have inside run drill. Um, But you guys decided and Coach Harbaugh decided and and you have that drill and it's labeled beat Ohio drill. Does that kind of up the intensity uh, in the drill? And you could you can label it beat Michigan State this week or any week. Right. It's beat your rivals. Um, Does that up the intensity when the drill comes around? Like what happens if you have a bad day? What happens if the offense wins? Do you guys go back there and say, hey, man, like, clearly that's not good enough to our standard. You know, that's not going to beat Ohio. Yeah, I just feel like it just adds to what the drill is. Like it gives it like a deeper meaning. And like when you do bad in it, it really like, like say, the defense, doesn't, yeah, say yeah. the defense doesn't do as good or like 
that's kind of just like setting the tone for that practice mm -hmm. and that week. And, you know, like you really want to win that every week. Um, and Coach Harbaugh will sometimes challenge it. Like he's like, I think this is going to be the first the first day where the offense doesn't score at all. Um, and then everyone just like it kind of just turns up. He'll like he'll feed into it. <laughs> yeah, that for, yeah, for sure. So, all right. Um, has Coach Harbaugh ever got under center? Has he ever taken a snap in uh, nine on seven or beat beat Ohio? Nah. <laughs> okay. I, the reason I ask is, is someone asked me this the other day, and uh, you know, we you go, there's a drill before beat uh, the inside run drill, and Coach Harbaugh, you know, he wears his khakis and and he he was wearing cleats back when I was. I don't know if he still wears cleats around the building, but he he would always have a pair of cleats on, and the quarterbacks would be outside doing you know you know check down drill or whatever with the quarterback coach, and they'd blow the horn, and it was inside run drill. And we're waiting and we're waiting. And, hey, you only have so many minutes to practice. So as Coach Harbaugh's waiting for him, eventually he would just get in the huddle, call the play, break it, and he would take us through the snap count. So there, there was a couple times when I was there, Harbaugh probably took, you know, three or four or five snaps under center uh, in the beat Ohio drill. So pretty, pretty funny. Um, all right, so I wanted to ask you, give you guys a chance to kind of like, as you know each other, um, first off, are you roommates in the dorms? Yeah, yeah. so – well, we were allowed to – so, like, Coach Harbaugh has this new thing where, like, he started, like, last year. It's, like, if you don't redshirt, then, like, you're allowed to move out of dorms after, like, a year or so like that. But we were we were roommates in the dorms, and now we live off campus the other two. Yeah. Nice. Uh, who's who's the uh, chef? Do you guys cook, or do you always go out to eat with the NIL? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, we don't really cook like that. Uh, our other roommate, uh, Darius Clemens, uh, he's the cook. He could he could really cook for real. Okay. Yeah. Dang, you got the wide receiver cooking? Yeah. <laughs> he, he's a really good chef, for real. What's his specialties? Uh, he made – uh, he made some steak. He make like he made like steak cubes. It was really good. Ken, so Ken is smiling ear to ear, but Mason, you're not really smiling. He, can you second that? Can you verify that? Is Darius oh, yeah, a good verify. cook? <laughs> he's, okay. made a few, he's made a few good things. Uh, he's made some like <laughs> chicken and stuff like that too. Nice. I don't, nice. I don't think he's like a crazy, crazy like, like yeah big, big, big dish and like. <laughs> Family. Look, if you're making steak bites and chicken in college, I mean that's yeah. crazy <laughs> enough, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so for for both of you and in, in, in Kenneth, I'll start with you because it's hard to talk about yourself. But I want to ask you, Kenneth, you know what it was like, uh, you know, going through recruiting and getting to know Mason, and then coming in as a as freshman and you know seeing your classmate Mason have the season he did last year I think you were a freshman All-American Mason if I'm not mistaken but you know Kenneth from your standpoint what was that like to watch you know your brother as you said right your your teammate balling out and doing his thing on the interior of the D-line oh uh, it was definitely fun watching him uh really watching all all the guys just learning as much as I can just soaking it but you know he's a really good teacher he teaches me tips and tricks and stuff to better my game. So, like, every day I'm just learning. So, what do yeah. you like about his game, about Mason's game? You said what about Mason's game? Yeah, yeah. what do you like about it? Uh, He's really very quick laterally. Uh, Actually, he's really smart. Like, he has good in-game IQ. Uh, He knows, like, what's coming and before it's even coming. It's sometimes, like, freaky, crazy, kind of weird. But, like, he's smart for real. I feel I, I feel that's fair. I mean, I've I've watched the tape and I see the same thing. Good with your hands too, uh, laterally. So it makes it it makes it a hard matchup. Mason, I want to ask you the same thing just for Kenneth. Um, you know, as a sophomore, thinking about you know when you guys got on campus last year, you got there early. Kenneth got there in the summer. What what do, what has it been like seeing Kenneth's growth? Yeah, I mean, I I mean, from the moment he stepped in the building, I always knew he had such like such good talent. Um, and he was going to be a great player. But I feel like last year he really didn't get as much as opportunity to show that. But I feel like I always knew that he was this caliber of a player. Um, and it, I knew it was just like a matter of time before everyone else saw it. It's it's such a deep room, man. such a such a deep room, man. So so then you guys were in the room with Mozzie last year and you see him go first round. Right. And he was, a you know, talk about a leader. Chris Jenkins this year, captain. Um, you know, what what'd you take from Mozzie's game as as he had the season he did and was so disruptive and then goes on now to, you know, play for the Cowboys as a first round pick? 
I mean, his, his his mentality of like disruption is like destroy the man first, worry about the ball later. So like that that re- that really helps. Like just keeping you humble and staying to your like your base your base techniques and all the small stuff like that. Yeah, I feel like he kind of like I feel like in a sense like he kind of like set the tone for our room too. Yeah. Um, you know, like co- uh, coach also would be like. You guys want to work on some pass rest or something like that, and Mozzie would be like, uh, "We'll go hit the sled. Uh, we'll yeah. go do some run game stuff." So I feel like he he was just like a big uh, part of our unit, um, just setting the tone um, and setting the standard for what like how we want to play as a D line. Man, it's so important. Um, gosh, dude. Hey, I love to. I like to run routes first air. I wish the whole practice was routes first air, but I needed someone to say, "Hey, man, we got to work on our blocking." You know, and it, it backs up something. I talked to Braden McGregor and Jalen Harrell earlier in the year, and they they said when they were on scout team, they were a little bit worried, like, "Hey, I don't want to go too hard and get yelled at by the offense." And they said Mozzie saw them one day and, and like grabbed them and said, "Hey, like, dude, none of that. Like, you make their life hell. Like, this is where you win in practice." Um, Sounds like there was some of that, right? It sounds like there was some of that with Mozzie just bringing that intensity on a day-to-day basis for you guys at practice and, and within the competition. Yeah, he. I feel like he just kind of knew that um, he was going to pass the torch to us in a sense. So he kind of just wanted us to be like – he wanted to set that foundation because he knew he was going to be a, a good player um, next year. I mean, this year now. Uh, but after he left, he just wanted to set the standard for – all the guys coming back and just kind of carry that tradition of that kind of mindset that we want to have. How about for a guy like Chris then, uh, Kenneth? Because, <laughs> you know, he he's taken a huge, huge leap. Like Mozzie got – Mozzie it was Mozzie's name that got discussed a bunch last year. And, and Chris made his plays, particularly in, late in the season. But he's taken that big step this year. What have you seen from him? Yeah, Chris. Uh, he, as you can tell, he's very dominant in the run game. But I think one area he he really worked in uh, this spring and this summer, and fall camp was he definitely like worked on his pass rush. Like he, I think I truly believe like he's an all around defensive tackle, the defensive tackle and stuff like that. It's funny because uh, you kind of talked about it, Mason. Your quickness, um, Chris, quick, Kenneth. Quick, like you guys are all even Rayshon Benny, right? Like even you guys are big dudes. How? What is it? Is it Coach Herbert? Like how do you guys stay light enough on your feet to be able to move around? Yeah, I feel like it's just like a combination of everything. Um, obviously our, our athletic um, builds, uh, stuff like that. But I feel like a lot of time we want to strike people, like strike a lineman. But uh, when we're kind of like on our movements, we kind of want to like make people miss and have a little fun with it too. Um, and create some bigger plays like that. So I feel like, yeah, Coach, Coach Herb and all those guys, uh, strength staff, we've been working with them, you know, for part, so long. So Is part of it, like, early in the game, you want to dominate somebody and, like, shock their chest, huh, and, like, make them feel it. So then all of a sudden you catch them leaning in the stance, and that's when you can kind of move around them, huh, get quick. Yeah. yeah. Um, with that in mind, did you guys play any uh, other sports growing up then? Uh, I played my first sport is actually baseball, and then I I did football, and then when in high school I did uh track, basketball, and football. What'd you run in track? Uh, no, nah, I didn't run. I threw. 100? Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> I threw the shot put. Yeah, yeah. What about baseball? Did you do you have a uh a player comp maybe? Uh, mm, no, nah, I wouldn't say player comp, but I definitely play. Uh, I played first base and right field. Okay, yeah. nice. Yeah, outfield, a little speed, a good yeah. deal. Well, how many home runs? Uh, I don't remember. It was so it was such long time ago. <laughs> yeah, Mason, did you play anything in uh, in in uh, growing up? Yeah, I always played like a lot of sports, um, a lot of time because I've always wanted to stay active. Um, I wasn't really like a I liked video games and stuff like that, but I always wanted to like be outside the house and stuff like that, but. Probably my I started football when I was like five. Um, started doing some rugby too, um, basketball, baseball, just all, all the all the general sports. But I found baseball was kind of just like too slow paced for me, so I kind of just set that to the side. 
<laughs> but I, I really liked rugby and football a lot, so I kind of just stuck with those for the most part. Hey, man, rugby's an underrated sport, man. My dad played it. My brother p- played it, so I grew up watching it. I was in South America or uh, South Africa this year, right right as the World Cup was getting ready to kick off. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's an awesome, awesome sport. Um, all right, man, well, we only got a couple more minutes here, so I just want to take a chance to, to get you guys' thoughts on the defense as a whole, man. Absolutely unbelievable. So I got some stats here. You guys have scored more touchdowns as a unit than you've given up. That's crazy, right? Um, You've given up the fewest total points in all of college football. You've given up 40 points. There's a lot of defenses that give up 40 points a game. Um, Teams are averaging less than 100 rushing yards against your defense, too. So those are three stats that really pop, that really stand out. When you think about your goals on a week-to-week basis, what are the one or two things that you know, hey, man, if we can do this, the defense will succeed? Uh, Definitely. Uh, Coach Minner installed uh, our four pillars, which is block destruction, effort and angles, I'm not sure communication, and ball disruption. And uh, he definitely instilled us and make, made us buy into that. Uh, he did that in the spring, and it definitely changed us and helped us. Uh, it's like a different type of mentality. Like, you want to be the best, you got to play like the best. Mason, how do you how do you emphasize that? Because I swear, I've, I hear a lot of coaches say that kind of thing, right? Like, I, every coach say, hey, man, we got to do this, we got to do – but you guys – clearly live it like there's no there's no thought but on a week-to-week basis you guys are living by those exact four principles how, how does that get applied on a day-to-day basis yeah i feel like it's just like the way we emphasize it um you know the first thing when we come in the meeting is we throw on those four pillars and that's mm. the first thing we start with the meeting coach Manor really doesn't say anything you know the, the uh it's usually cp that starts it off coach partridge <laughs> um so he's the one that uh is he takes on the effort and angles one. Coach Klink is the obnoxious communication. Coach Jay Harbaugh is um, ball disruption, and Coach Elson is block disruption. So uh, they'll all go up there. Um, usually on Mondays we'll show clips from the games, and then Tuesdays on is just every, um, like, good and bad clips. So – and it just – it's a lot of stuff we can just learn from. Um, and, like, even some plays on the field, like, we'll be in the game, someone takes a bad angle to the ball, we'll be like – Oh, that's going to be on the effort and angles when Coach Partridge goes up in the morning. <laughs> so it's just like absolute accountability, right? Like you know exactly where you stand, and clearly you guys know the standard. And shoot, man, I mean, when the, when a defense is playing that good, when a unit is playing that good, like you feel accountable to your boys too, like right? Like you know, you know, like hey, man, I don't want to be the one to mess this up because we're rolling. Um, I, one of one of the more underrated points of of being a part of a football team is those film sessions. What is it like when you? make a play in the game, and then you kind of get rewarded. You're the guy that's getting the praise in, in those uh, Monday meetings. I mean, it, there's always a praise, but it's never, like, too big. You know, we always try to stay humble yeah. and just make a joke out of it or laugh about laugh about it or stuff like that. But like, What was the interception like? What was that What was that like in the meeting on uh, Monday? <laughs> I mean, it, it was hype. Everybody got hyped. You know, we do it like – a little thing where everybody does two claps. He say, give them two claps. And then that's really, it was just on to the next, you know? That's awesome. What about the flip side? I've been in, I've been in a few meetings. I can think of a, a couple scenarios where I'm like, damn dude, I do not want to sit in the meeting. And then, but you got to take it, you know, you got to take it. You guys ever been on the wrong side of it? And, and what's it like, you know, being in the meeting with your, your boys around you? Yeah. Sometimes, you know, like you'll think of, you'll think back on a play and be like, Oh man, I hope they don't show this this clip in one of the pillars um, because you'll see yourself in the corner of the screen, maybe like not running to the ball as hard as you can. But I feel like that's really something that we've really harped on, um, just going all out, really. But yeah, there's definitely funny moments in the film, um, stuff like that. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, as we, as we wind it down again, we, we mentioned that this is Michigan State week, this is rivalry week, this is a big game. Um, What's the conversation like when you guys break up to your defensive unit and, and um, understand, hey, man, like, of course, you got to play violent every single week, right? That's your violence, violent defense. Disruption is a word that came up in those pillars, but it's your rival, and you know they're going to be violent as well. What's the conversation like when you guys break up and just have a meeting as your defensive unit? Uh, I feel like, you know, Coach Minner kind of 
Um, even today, he kind of sets a sets a tone at the beginning of the week. He's like, um, he's like, it's always like it's about us. Um, it doesn't matter who we line up against. Um, if we play our best, uh, our brand of football, you know, no one can really play with us for four quarters. Um, and I feel like that's just like that really hits home because that's really so true, and we all see that of each other um, as a defense. Awesome, fellas. Well, listen, thanks so much for taking time out of your day. I know you just wrapped up practice and you got some homework to do. You got to get back. Um, I'll tell you what, we're excited to have you here for the program, me being an alum, me being a Michigan fan, watching you guys. Um, super excited to watch you the rest of the season. Super thankful, uh, you know, Michigan country and, and the Michigan fans are super thankful we got you for at least this year and next year uh, before you got to maybe have a decision to make to go on to the next level. So with that in mind, hey, you know what helps people love Michigan even more? Head, it's supporting your athletes. And one way we can do this in the world of NIL for you listeners, for you viewers, support these guys. Head over to Champion Circle, uofm.com, and help support your student athletes. Mason, Kenneth, guys, thanks so much for taking the time. Good luck this week. I can't wait to watch you guys take on the Spartans. Appreciate it.